Good evening. This is CTV News for May 2nd. It's a Wednesday. I'm Monica McNutt. That's right, Monica. And I'm Denise Douglas. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Well, topping our news tonight, a massive fire breaks out in Greenbelt. Nearly 100 firefighters were called to this townhouse development on Aerospace Drive this afternoon. They found it fully engulfed in flames. The Ryan Community Homes development is partially occupied, but the section that caught fire was under construction. It's unclear how the blaze started. Uh, at about 12.30 this afternoon, firefighters uh, responded to reported building under construction on fire at Aerospace Drive and Hubble Drive here in the uh, Greenbelt area. When they arrived, they found several buildings uh, involved with heavy fire. These were buildings that were under construction. It appears the fire started in a four-story condominium building uh, and spread rapidly to the next row, which were townhouses also under construction and then it started to spread to a row of occupied, completed townhomes. Our first priority was to evacuate everybody involved in, in those townhomes, which we did evacuate those people safely. Uh, it, this fire went to about three alarms. We have about 100 firefighters here uh, on board of about 40 pieces of fire apparatus. This was a, uh, a very quick moving, hot, hot fire. Uh, and fortunately, nobody was injured. My wife called me uh, very frantic and said that our house is on fire. Yes, all the windows on the third and fourth floor are completely uh, sh shattered out. I mean, I live in apartments across the street and I saw all the smoke, but when then I heard it was these ones. And I have friends that just moved in there. They just weren't tired. Firefighters were called to the scene around 1 p.m. Two people are dead after a shooting in Capitol Heights early this morning. Around 3 a.m., police responded to a shooting in the 4700 block of Omaha Street. When they arrived, they found an elderly couple shot multiple times in their home. Residents are upset by this tragic incident, but say they still feel safe in the neighborhood. I've been here 19 years, and it's always been quiet. You know, it's always been quiet during the day and the night. So, no, I'm not really concerned. There's somebody out there who may have heard something or seen something that may have been out of the ordinary that help us solve this crime. So please give us a call so we can bring this, uh, this case to a, re a, a quick closure. It's really sad. You know, um, those are someone's parents, you know, who lived their lives very peaceful and comf comfortably and been around the neighborhood for years. You know, so for this to happen is really, is really sad. Police are still gathering facts to determine the motive and suspects. If you have any information on this case, you are urged to call police. Meanwhile, both the community and officials continue to react to Dr. Kevin Maxwell's decision to resign as the CEO of Prince George's County Public Schools. The announcement came late yesterday. Maxwell has been dogged by a number of controversies, including a grade-fixing scandal and his decision to give pay raises to his executive staff. A number of officials have called for his resignation, but County Executive Rashawn Baker, who hired him in 2013, continue to support him. Here's what he had to say today about Maxwell's decision to step down at the end of the school year. No, I wasn't surprised that he started the process and really he has not resigned. What he announced uh, yesterday was the fact that, um, which I think became pretty obvious over the last uh, couple of weeks, and that is all three of the county executive candidates have indicated they'd like to go in a different direction uh, with the next superintendent. Uh, so we know we we're going to have a new county executive in December. And I think what Dr. Maxwell did was in the best interest of uh, the children of Prince George's County, uh, the teachers and the principals, and that is to put together a smooth transition. So he's announced that he is going to meet with the board at the end of the school year to talk about that transition. And I think that's appropriate so we focus on graduation and the students and, uh, and parents of our school system. In a statement, County Council Chair Danielle Gleros thanked Maxwell for his service and praised the work he has done during his tenure. She also says the council will do its part to ensure that the transition to a new leader is done in an orderly and timely fashion. Prior to coming to work for Prince George's School District, Maxwell was a superintendent for Anne Arundel County Public Schools. So, the big question a lot of people are asking is what's next for the school district in light of Dr. Maxwell's res resignation? Joining us now to talk more about that and other things is Teresa Dudley, president of the Prince George's County Education Association. Teresa, thanks for being with us. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here with you two today. Absolutely. Kind of let's start with your reaction to the resignation as well as to what County Executive Rashawn Baker said. Well, 
County Executive Rashawn Baker, and I'm, I don't want to personalize this and pick a name. The county executive went to the state in 2013 and asked for the ability to take over the school system. And most recently, he said, hold me accountable. Um, and when he was brought before the Maryland General Assembly to give his report. And I think he should be held accountable because for the past several months, we've seen um, things happen that affect our staff in such a grievous way. When you see secret pay raises um, to executive level staff, some of them exceeding 37%, when our educators are three steps behind. It's not right to do that. And his contract said that he should be committed to the children and to the staff, but that's not a showing a commitment to the staff. And when we talk about accountability, um, the county executive is technically his, his boss because he hired him. So why didn't he say to him, hey, this is wrong what you're doing? And it's not as though we didn't meet with the county executive. I met with him last year. I explained to him that this was a problem. We had hundreds and hundreds of members on administrative leave. And it, now we're looking at three school counselors who have been from Duval High School who have been given a letter of, of recommending termination for them when they were doing what they were told to do right out of the central office. So when you have this type of nonsense going on, the reality is who's accountable? Dr. Maxwell's fallen on the sword for the county executive who could because he wants to be the governor and I challenge everyone in Prince George's County to ask themselves well if he's gonna be the governor is this how he's gonna govern is he gonna say woo we're just gonna take over the whole state of Maryland and do what we want to do and I'm gonna put people in charge here 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 and here and as long as they're making me look good I don't care about that I'm gonna do what I gotta do so then, Teresa, when the new superintendent arrives in December, what sort of like, protocol, I guess I would say, would you like to see in place to sort of, so that there is a check and balance of power and money for that matter? Well, we, at, we went to the General Assembly and we asked for them to put checks and balances in place because current, the current structure is the appointment from the county executive appoints the CEO. What we, what we asked for was more accountability so that the Board of Education could have some sort of check on what Dr. the CEO was doing. It fell on deaf ears. It fell on the deaf ears of the um, Senate President Mike Miller, deaf ears of Senator Rosenbeck, and I am calling names because they need to be held accountable for what they have done. Senator Joanne Benson, Senator Victor Ramirez, um, uh, Paul Pensky, all of those senators, with the exception of Senator Muse, stood silent when all of these things were going on and we went to them. I met with Senator Rosabeff and I said, the relationship mm. between what was going wrong and how this was, was a reflection of Dr. Matt, of the, the CEO trying to cover things up so that the county executive looks good running for, um, for governor. So in effect, um, what would you like to see in terms of skills and qualities in the next superintendent? Because clearly you weren't happy with what was going on under Dr. Maxwell. The stakeholders need to be involved in the selection. And what we are asking for, and we just might as well just go ahead and demand that there's community and stakeholder involvement in the selection of whoever the next CEO should be. That um, the timing of this resignation, um, it lends itself so that no matter what happens, nothing's gonna happen till after the Democratic primary anyway, which that's more of the politicization of our school system. Um, we have to make sure that we have somebody in that position that understands that you have to work with all of the, the labor unions, from the teachers to the bus drivers to the, all of the staff, the, um, the principals and the custodial staff, we all have a vested interest in the school system and we deserve to be treated fairly. For my members to be three steps behind where they're supposed to be and um, the uh, county executive promised us that, we want somebody who's gonna make good on promises that were made to us. And if 
if you want to be the governor, then you should be prepared to fix the mess you leave behind. Okay. Lots to think about from yes, Teresa. Yes, absolutely, and it's a story that we'll definitely be following and clearly talking with you some more. Thank you so much for joining no us.